Well, I'm glad that Jesus is, holds us together. Amen. You know, we, uh, um, a lot of times, you know, we're not perfect and, you know, how we do things around here and we get, you know, going on the wrong key or something messes up on the screen, but if you're looking for organized religion, this ain't it, okay? I'm just letting you know. But uh, we serve a perfect Savior, and uh, God is very organized. You ever think about it, how He organized the nature, how He organized your body, and, you know, uh, just different things. You know, God is very, very organized. And uh, this last week, uh, of course, was uh, Thanksgiving, and I trust everyone uh, ate plenty and everything like that, and we're thankful um, for everything. And so... Um, uh, we have, um, uh, Thanksgiving God is an important, um, theme in the Bible, isn't it? I mean, if we're not, uh, if we're not thankful, then we start looking around or looking at others and we get bitter toward them, uh, you know, in different things. And so it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and sing praise of thy name, O Most High. And, um, let's say our purpose statement together, whatever it takes to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. Now, um, uh, First Chronicles 16 uh, is where we're going to be. First Chronicles 16, and uh, that's back in the Old Testament. If you're looking for it, it's right before Second Chronicles. Okay, so I just wanted to, wanted to help you find that. Now, this is a a song of thanksgiving or a psalm of thanksgiving. Now, you can find psalms in the Word of God. Other than in the in the book of Psalms, right? And so the Psalms was the kind of song book of the uh, the the Old Testament and different things. That should be the song book of today. Uh, now uh, it says in First Chronicles sixteen seven, <coughs> the the occasion was that David had brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. And that's when he danced before the Lord with all of his might. He took off his outer, you know, layer of clothing and different things. And he was kind of dancing out there in his underwear. And, you know, I'm not going to demonstrate that this morning. Okay, I just want to let you know. And, uh, you know, the people are saying, Whew, I'm glad. And so, uh, so anyway, uh, uh, you know, he danced before the Lord with all his might. He brought the Ark of the Covenant into uh, Jerusalem. Now, the Ark of the Covenant was an important symbol of God in the Old Testament to the people of God, all right? Mm -hmm. And so this is the occasion. So he's bringing the Ark in. And uh, so in verse 7, it says, Then on that day, uh, David delivered this psalm to thank the Lord and to the hand of Asaph and his brethren. So uh, he's just saying, okay, it's time to give thanks unto the Lord. Now, we... Uh, even though we are living in a wicked world, and even though we are living in a world that uh, is godless and anti-Christ, uh, we have a lot to thank God for. Amen? Amen? And so we are here, and we're going to thank God. And this is a psalm of thanksgiving. Uh, and it says, um, uh, And so Asaph uh, said, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the people. I mean, they had testimony service. I mean, we've kind of gotten away from testimony services, haven't we? I remember those old time uh, testimony service when I was a kid and growing up, and and they say, you know, somebody testify the Lord, and, and I mean, I, I, if they didn't have something, they'd make up something, you know. I mean, they, but I mean, they had something in their heart, they had something in their soul that they were thankful to the Lord about, you know. And so uh, I just remember those old time uh, testimony services, and it's important to make the deeds of God known among the people. And it says in verse nine, sing unto Him. Sing psalms unto him. I talk ye of his wondrous works. It's so good. It's okay to talk about how good God is. Amen. That's why we say God is good all the time around here. It says, "Glory ye in His holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord." Now, in order for your heart to rejoice, you're going to have to do some seeking. And I know that there's people here this morning that are seeking God. And that's good. That's a good thing to seek the Lord. Because in order for God to bless you, you are going to have to put out some effort, right? You're going to have to seek and you shall what? 
Find. find, all right? Everyone that seeks, find. So, so seek the Lord. Uh, seek the Lord in his strength uh, and his face for, for how long? Continually. Continually. Then it says, remember. A lot of times, you know, our memory gets clouded, doesn't it? Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O oh, you seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. So, you know, God is coming back. He's going to right everything, uh, all the wrongs, and he's going to judge the wicked, and he's going to save the righteous, right? Just like in the days of Noah, right? Uh, verse 15, Be mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. We haven't even come close to a thousand generations yet. But he commanded his word unto a thousand generations. Do you realize it from, I think it was from David to the New Testament, it was only 14 generations, I think. I will have to do my, my, uh, my uh, uh, I, see, I, I, re I didn't remember, maybe, so. <laughs> Got to remember that stuff. Now, verse 16, even of the covenant which he has made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a land and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, I will give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when you were but few, even a few strangers in it, and when they went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. And you're going to touch Israel? No, you're not. You know, he reproved kings for Israel's sake, for the people of God. Uh, you know, saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. I mean, it don't hurt to tell the heathen how good God is, does it? It says to declare his works among the heathen. And for great is the Lord and greater to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. He's the creator of the universe. Uh, so I was a, I was on a, I, believe it or not, I know it's hard to believe, I used to snow ski. Yeah, yeah when I was a young man, I, I mean, uh, you know, I was skinnier, uh, you know, uh, I wasn't going to break my leg if I fell down, uh, but I figured out that the ski lift is a great place to witness, because they can't go anywhere, right? <laughs> and I remember this one guy asking me this question one day, he said, how do you know which God is the real God? I says, you go back to the creator. That's how you know the real God. The one that created everything. Mm -hmm. And so this is what the psalmist is saying here. It says, uh, the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor, verse 27, glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord, you kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord glory and a do unto his name, bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth, uh, the world. It shall also be stable that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let men say among the nations, the Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice and all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And say, you, save us, O God, of our salvation, and gather us together, and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to the holy name and glory in thy praise. That's a good prayer to pray, isn't it? Save us from the heathen. Well, we see a lot of, uh, you know, heathen... Uh, stuff going on today against the church and stuff. We just say, hey, Lord, save us from the heathen. Verse 36, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen. 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 And praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just pray, Lord God, that, Lord, you would put a song in our heart today and a jump in our step, Lord. And, Lord, we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Now this chapter of 1 Chronicles 16 throbs with vital teaching. The song of praise and thanksgiving comes after the ark of God was found in its rightful place. Now, you've, uh, you probably uh, have, have know something about the ark of God. This was the ark of the covenant that Moses, God instructed Moses to make. And he says, uh, Moses, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take this, uh, make this box, box of acacia wood. And I want you to overlay it with uh, pure gold. And inside of the Ark of the Covenant, I want you to put some pieces in there. Uh, the, uh, the, the tablets that uh, Moses got off the mount were in there. The, uh, there was some manna in there later. And then there was uh, the Aaron's rod that budded in there was later put in there. And so um, uh, I'm going to go into what those mean in just a minute. And then on top of the Ark of the Covenant was a lid called the Mercy Seat. Now, it's always important to understand that, uh, that mercy uh, always uh, uh, over, is over the top of the law. Now, if you take the mercy seat off and look into the Ark of the Covenant, you would instantly die because of the judgment of God against sin. Because you would look at the righteous law of God or the covenant of God. Now, uh, and so uh, the Ark of the Covenant... Uh, is, a, is a type of Christ. Now this, this chapter throbs with vital teaching. The song of praise and thanksgiving comes after the ark found its rightful place in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. True thanksgiving to our God will take place in our lives when God has found His rightful place in our lives uh, because it says, Know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. So, uh, you know, a lot of people, they look for God all over the, all over the place, and, and they, they kind of pick and choose. Well, that sounds good. I think I'll add that uh, piece of God to uh, my heart. And then, and then all of a sudden, their lives are in a mess. All of a sudden, their souls are not prospering. All of a sudden, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're uh, trying to figure out what is going on in their life because their lives are falling apart because Christ has not found his rightful place in their heart. And so uh, the Ark of the Covenant is a type of Christ. It, 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 uh, it was the representation of the power of God in the midst of Israel. And know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we have the power of God within us. We have the power of God in the church. And we need to understand it. We need to have faith in it. We need to understand that, uh, you know, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. We need to understand that we are heaven bound. We need to understand that we are glory bound. Somebody say glory. Because, you know, we need to understand this stuff because if we don't we will get discouraged and we will quit being thankful to God now the ark of the covenant is a type of Christ it was a representation of the power of God in the midst of Israel the ark was made with acacia wood it was overlaid with pure gold the wood being the earthly the gold being the heavenly uh, or the divine Jesus was born of a woman but his father was God he was of the earth but he was of heaven uh, inside the ark we find the ten commandments or the law of God Inside Jesus, we find that he was the fulfillment of the law as he lived a perfect life without sin. So he was uh, inside of Jesus, we find the perfect unbroken law of, of, uh, of in Jesus. Also, inside the ark was some of the manna that had subsided the children of Israel for 40 years in the desert. Remember the manna that God provided in the desert? You know, they'd go out in the morning and they'd find this manna. Uh, you know, they, it was angel's food, it says. And they'd make cake out of it and it was angel food cake. And so, I just made that part of it. But there was some of the manna. And that fed the children of Israel for 40 years in the desert. And Jesus was the true manna that came down from heaven, it says in John chapter 6, right? So, and also inside the ark was Aaron's rod that budded. Now, they had a God contest one time back in the Old Testament. Uh, they said, okay, because uh, there was some trouble in the camp. And, and they said, well, uh, you know, that uh, they were uh, downplaying uh, Aaron and Moses uh, as the leaders of Israel. And so they said, okay, here's what we'll do. Yeah, everybody takes their rods. And then we put it in inside this uh, the tent or whatever it was there. And it says, and the, the rod that buds, he's the real deal. And they go in there and they wrote their names on the rods, right? And uh, so they go in there in the morning and Aaron's rod had budded. This dead stick had budded 
uh, out with almonds, I guess it was almond tree, off of an almond tree, it had budded, and uh, it, was, um, it was representative of life, right? The, the, the budded, uh, Aaron's rod, the budded, and this represents life from the dead. Jesus was crucified and rose up from the dead the third day. Now, on the top of the ark, there was the mercy seat, and it's always vital that we see that mercy always is between God and God's law. If you were to look inside the Ark of the Covenant, you would immediately die. And there was people that did look inside in the Old Testament and did die. There was people that touched the Ark right before he, the, the uh, Ark was brought the right way into Jerusalem. There was a young man that touched the Ark and he died instantly. And David was mad at the Lord that day. You know, he said, man, I was trying to do a righteous thing here. And, um, uh, you know, you didn't honor it, God. You ever, you ever had that conversation with God? <laughs> God, I'm trying to be good here, and, and you haven't honored it. What's up with that, God? Have you ever had those conversations with God? I have. I have. You know? and, uh, and so the Lord says, it, well, you didn't bring it in the right way. So what did David have to do? He had to go look in the Word of God. And he had to figure out that the ark was not to be put on a cart. He had to figure out that there were sticks that went through the little rings on the ark and the Levites were to carry the ark. He had to figure that out. He had to go back to the Word and figure out how the right way was. He had to seek the Lord to figure out what the right way was to bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. A lot of people just want to come to church and they just want God any old way. Oh God, you don't just bless me any old way. I don't care. I mean, it's all good anyway. I'm okay, you're okay. And they take this worldly philosophy that don't work and they, they figure out, you know, hey, well, that didn't work. And a lot of people say, well, that didn't, I tried church once, that didn't work, and so I'm not going back. Well, how stupid is that? <laughs> you know? I mean, God is God. He's the creator of the universe. I mean, He raised the dead and He, he certainly can save your sorry soul. Amen. You know? And we need to believe that. And we need to seek the Lord for that. We need to sing praise unto Him. But it has to be done the right way. Otherwise, God does not honor it. True. And a lot of people say, well, I just want any old religion, any old way. And God, I want, to go, I want to go to heaven when I die. But I want to sin all I want between now and then. And have the grace of God save me. Well, that doesn't work. That's false theology, folks. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we need to understand. That the mercy is always on top of the law. See, at first, David tried to bring the ark to Jerusalem the wrong way and it caused death because they did not bring up the ark according to the word of the Lord. And 1 Chronicles 15, 13 says, If we are to bring God to us, we must bring Him the right way according to His word. You see, it says, Because you did it not at first, the Lord our God made a, a breach upon us for that we sought him not after the due order. They sought the Lord the wrong way. You see, if we're going to bring God to us, we must, uh, we must too bring him the right way, according to his word. Many people try to bring God to themselves without going the way of the cross. But holy God will not be mocked. He will do things according to his word. Jesus made a way through his shed blood that we might have access to the holy of holies. When he died, the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. Now, the Holies of Holies was a little room that housed the Ark of the Covenant. And every year you'd have to bring, before Jesus died, you'd have to bring a, your little sacrifice, a, your bird or your dove or your sheep or your, you know, something, your lamb. And then the priest would kill it and then he would go behind the curtain to the Holy of Holies and he would sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice on the mercy seat and your sins were atoned for for one year. Now, when Christ died on the cross and made the ultimate sacrifice for sin and shed his blood, the veil in front of the Ark of the Covenant was torn from top to bottom. Now, this wasn't, this wasn't paper mache, folks. <laughs> this veil... Uh, they, they did studies on this veil and it could not be torn. You know, I mean, it was so strong and woven together. 
Uh, you know, they they you know they said that uh, you know like five elephants pulling each way we could not tear the veil. But God tore it from top to bottom, and He made a way into the holy of holies where there was no other way before. Now we can do a long big study on that out of, out of the book of Hebrews, but uh, we're we're going to keep on uh, preaching, okay, uh, this morning. Now. Um, when Jesus has found his rightful place in our lives, we too can sing this song of thanksgiving unto him for his mercy endures forever. You see, when, his, uh, when we receive Christ as our Savior and understand that it was his shed blood on the mercy seat that matters, see, uh, when the Ark of the Covenant entered into the city, David danced before the Lord with all of his might. Uh, there, therefore, we should give thanks to the Lord, call upon Him, His name, uh, call upon His name, uh, make known His deeds among the people. It says in verse eight. Now, let's go back to First Chronicles uh, uh, sixteen, verse eleven. It says, "Seek the Lord and His strength; seek His face continually." Now, what should we seek? We should seek the Lord Himself for salvation. You see, because there is no salvation in good works. There is no salvation in, uh, you know, uh, in, in donating your money to a worthless cause. There is no salvation in anything except the salvation God has provided. And that was through His Son, Jesus. So we need to seek the Lord for His salvation. He that findeth me, He says, findeth life. Jesus made a way that we may access Him personally. He is eternal life uh, for those who know Him. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way to get to heaven, and that's through Jesus. There's only one way uh, to get saved, and that's by the blood of Jesus. And we should seek His strength for service. A lot of people say, well, you know, I just, uh, I'm so tired. And I'm so wore out. And I well, seek his strength for service. God can just give you a little strength zap. I don't know what he does. But anyway, he can, he can strengthen you for service. We should uh, seek his strength for service. They that wait upon the Lord, it says, uh, Isaiah 40 says, shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I rebuke this idea that we have in today's churches that says we better not ask people to do too much. They might get burned out. Beloved, my strength comes from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. We need to understand that in today's churches. Because when we serve the Lord, we serve the God of glory. We serve the God of creation. We should seek His face continually for fellowship. To have the light of His face is to have the light of His presence. The psalmist said, In His presence is fullness of joy, and his, at His right hand there are pleasures forevermore. What should we sing? Verse 9. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. What should we sing? We are to learn how to sing to the Lord in the psalms. These are the songs of praise that will last through eternity. Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The psalms of praise are the ones that are going to last for eternity. These are, these are songs that are after God's own heart. We live in a culture today where many people merely attend church and want to be wowed by worship. They want to be entertained into the kingdom of God uh, by a professional band and easy believism and easy swallow sermon. But I declare unto you today, the God of glory wants your heart to give him praise. Those whose heart are full of thanksgiving to God are never at a loss to know what they shall sing because God has put a song in their heart. They shall, they have songs uh, which only uh, can be sung by the lips that touch with the live coals from off the holy altar. They have many psalms to sing unto the Lord. They have the psalm of deliverance. Uh, I was once a, a sinner, but God has delivered me. They have the psalm of deliverance. They have the psalm of forgiveness. Oh, I ask the Lord to forgive my sins uh, and by his blood he forgave me and I have the song of forgiveness I, we have the song of peace there used to be turmoil in my life and now I can go through a, a, a st storm and have perfect peace within my heart I have a song of peace I have a psalm of hope. I used to not have any hope. I used to know, did not know the Lord. And I had no hope. But now I have the hope of glory. Now I have the hope of heaven. We have the psalm of joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Sing it to the Lord a new psalm. 
and let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, that's the Psalms we can have in our hearts. What should we give? That's what we should sing. What should we give? Verse 8. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Verses 28 and 29. Give unto the Lord ye kindred of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory. Do his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That's why we don't take an offering. We worship the Lord with our giving. The best thanks that we can give the Lord is to live a life of grateful trust in Him day by day. We give Him glory and strength when we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. Many people think that God is far away and cannot be reached or that God's commands are too hard for them to do. Deuteronomy 30, verse 11 through 20. Deuteronomy 30. Verses 11 to 20 says this. For this commandment which I command thee this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? And so it's not, up, it's not up in heaven. Pastor, I need you to go up to heaven and, give me the, and bring me back the blessing. No, nope, ain't happening. Okay, neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it to, to us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God and walk in his ways and to keep his commandments. And his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. The Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whether thou goest to possess it. See there were some conditions in the blessings of God, isn't there? But if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land that thou, uh, whither thou passest over Jordan to go and to possess it. So the so choice is up to you guys. You can either do it God's way or you can do it your own way uh, and uh, be, be cursed. Okay. Um, and so uh, verse 18, I denounce you today that you shall surely perish and that you shall not prolong your days. Verse 19, I call unto heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear to thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. The key is the Lord, isn't it? Amen. The key is the Lord. You see, what should we remember back in verse 12 of First Chronicles 16. What should we remember? It says, um, verse 12. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wondrous works and the judgments of his mouth. So remember his marvelous works. Sometimes it's easy to forget the wonders of God. Gideon was a lad that uh, had a godly heritage, but he had last, lost hope of the things that God had promised. Matter of fact, you know, the angel come to Gideon and he says, man, where's all the promises of God? And where's the power of God? You know, in the days of, you know, he delivered the land of uh, 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 Israel out of the land of Egypt and different things. He, was, he had forgotten all the promises of God. And, the, and they, today there are those here that have not seen God move in their lives in a long time. And like Gideon, you're, you're hiding from the fear of man. Sometimes you wonder if it's all worth it. And like Gideon, you ask God, where are all the miracles that I've heard about? 
Where are all the revivals I've heard about in the past? But the angel of the Lord spoke unto Gideon and called the things that were as those that are. So Gideon, and he said, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Now Gideon was behind, uh, behind the building, uh, you know, threshing wheat because the Midianites were going to come and take it away from him, right? So he was trying to get the loaf of bread, is what he was doing. And, uh, and the angel comes up to Gideon and says, God is, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. So here was Gideon hiding and he felt, he didn't feel anything like a man of valor. You see, God called him a man of valor. You see? And a lot of times, you know, we don't feel like anything and we're afraid and, and, and of the world and different things. And God says, hey, you mighty man of valor, you mighty woman of valor. And you say, what, are you talking to me? You know, I'm just this scared little soul that, you know, I, I don't even know what's up. I've heard about your miracles, God, but haven't seen any. Sometimes circumstances causes us to lose hope in the Lord. But I declare to you today, oh, by the way, read that in uh, Judges chapter 6 today. Uh, I didn't have time to go into Judges uh, on Gideon. I declare to you today that we serve the same God as Gideon served. We serve the same God as David served. But they were mighty because God was their strength and God was their hope. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Lord is still our strength today. The Lord is still our healer today. The Lord is still powerful today. The Lord is still our salvation today. He has delivered us out of the miry clay and has set our feet on the solid rock and His name is Jesus. The reason that we go through the things that we go through is because we have forsaken Him and He has to be faithful to His word. Go back like David did. Figure it out. If we have brought Jesus into our lives the right way. Verse 15. Be mindful always of his covenant. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. According to this text his word is still for us today. If we will receive him. Remember the judgments of his mouth. And remember his words. Remember his marvelous works uh, and his wonders. If you were born again child of God. Then you are one of his miracles. Remember his faithfulness. And remember his covenant forever. You were bought with the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Remember his precious promises. Because all the promises of God are yes and amen. Remember all of his benefits that he gives us each day. And every day. Speak of them to each other. And let the nations praise his name. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. amen. Deuteronomy 8.10 says, When thou hast eaten and art full, thou shalt bless the Lord thy God. That, that uh, works for this week for Thanksgiving. And when thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he giveth thee. Psalm 92.1 It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise unto thy name, O Most, most High. Psalm 100 verse 4 Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be ye thankful unto his name. Psalm 107.22 and let them uh, sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Ephesians 5.20 Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And 1 Thessalonians 5.18 And everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ concerning you. May God bless the preaching of his word. Amen. 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 Maybe you're here this morning and you have to figure some things out. Like David did. Now David was a man after God's own heart. But he didn't always do everything right, did he? He had to go back and figure it out. He had to go out back and figure some things out in order to bring the ark of God, Jesus, in the right way. A lot of it didn't, uh, you know, David just didn't say, well, I tried. Didn't work. <laughs> ain't going to church anymore you know. <laughs> I'm glad David didn't say that aren't you yeah. I'm not going to church because of all of those hypocrites down there are down. I tell them I'd rather go to church with a few hypocrites than go to hell with all of them <laughs> you know because that's if you're a hypocrite I mean if you play yourself you know, you can't play salvation with God. You're either saved or you're not. You're either a child of God or a child of the devil. You know. And the good news is that we can be saved. The good news is 
that we can ask God to forgive us of our sins. We can seek Him the right way. And He will save us. Why did the, uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, the, the people said, well, what do we do? And the disciples, Peter says, well, repent and be baptized, every one of you, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I mean, that was the instructions, right? And it says that on that day, 5,000 or no, 3,000 people were saved uh, and uh, baptized, and they believed God, you know? And I mean, it, just the, the glory of God broke out, you know? And, uh, it's, and uh, can you imagine being at that baptismal service? I mean, it, I mean, all, I mean, every one of the disciples was busy. I'm sure, you know. <laughs> I mean, they, I mean, it was it was a glorious time, because but see, you have to repent first, because if you just get baptized, it don't do you any good. You gotta, you, you know, you know what you need to repent of, right? I mean, you you're grown people, you know the difference between right and wrong, right? Amen. You need you know what you need to repent of. It's that thing God's been bugging you about. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Or maybe. But you know, a lot of times we can't come to God before we really get down in our lives. And that's when we say, okay, God, I give up. Okay, God, I surrender. And that's when God can command His blessing to go into us. He can he command His salvation to go into us. And then we follow the instructions that the Lord has given. Repent, be baptized. Okay, well, uh, it says, how do, you, well, how do you repent? Well, you confess your sins uh, to the Lord and, and say, Lord, forgive me a sinner. I believe that, uh, you, you know, uh, you're God. And I believe that Jesus is your son. I, I believe that you had the power to raise him from the dead. I believe that you did raise him from the dead. And, and I believe you have the power to save me. And you prayed to God. Say, God have mercy upon me, a sinner. Amen. That's what the one guy prayed in the Bible. I remember the publican. He, he prayed, God have mercy upon me, a sinner. And you know, the love of God delights in the giving you mercy. The love of God delights in saving your soul. He's not willing that any should perish, he says, but all should come to repentance. God delights. That's why he hadn't wiped the world out yet. Right? <laughs> There's more people that needs, he needs to have mercy on. Right? Me, I'd have wiped them out a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you look at the... Don't you look at the news sometimes and just torch your hide? I mean, you know. But, uh, you know, God sees all this stuff going on. But the love of God is still having mercy on us today. I want to bow our heads and close our eyes just for a minute. And I just want to uh, ask you this morning, if, uh, if you want to come to God for the first time and pray to God for the first time and the right way, and repent of your sins. Now that it mean it, repenting of your sins means that you have to change your lifestyle. I know when God saved me, He radically saved me from the inside out, and um, it wasn't I wasn't the same person after God had saved me. And uh, we can be saved. And I, I remember coming forward in a little church, kind of like about as big as maybe a little smaller than this one actually. And I asked, I prayed something. But God had mercy upon me that day. Why? Because I, uh, I was at the right place where He wanted me. I tried it the right way because I tried a lot of times to get saved all the time I was growing up. Because, And I grew up between a Baptist dad and a Pentecostal mom. I mean, you know, I, was, I had the best of both worlds, you know. Um, but I still wasn't saved. And God had to put me in a place to where I knew I was a sinner. And I knew, knew I needed Jesus. And the only, the only thing that I knew when I got saved, I knew this. I knew that I was a sinner, which was important to know. And I knew that if God did not save me, I was going to destroy my life through sin. Because I'd almost died. I'd almost, I'd, I had hepatitis, almost died. And uh, uh, different things, just from living a sinful life and different things. And God had mercy upon me. I can give you my testimony, but I cannot be your testimony. You know, I'm going to testify the good things God has done for me. And I can tell you that He can do the same thing for you. But until you surrender and give your life to Jesus, He can't do anything for you and won't do anything. Matter of fact, you'll be under the curse instead of the blessing, what the Word says. So if there's one here this morning 
And I believe there's uh, people that are searching their soul even right now. If you're here this morning and you say, you know, I need to repent of my sins. I need to come to God the first time. Or maybe you need to repent and you know, come back to God. I mean, you know, you can uh, rededicate your life. You can do things like that. And God's uh, working in your life. And uh, just uh, raise your hand and wave at me. I promise I'll pray for you. And, uh, uh, you know, there's nobody looking around or anything like that. It's between you and God. And uh, so uh, I just want to give you that opportunity to say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I, I want you, uh, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Lord, I want to give my life to you. Uh, Lord, I believe in you. And uh, you may not know um, how to uh, do it, but you know, do it the best you can. I mean, uh, take some action toward God to see His face the right way. And God will bless your life. God will have mercy upon your soul. Everyone here this morning that has been saved has that testimony that at some time in their life God has had mercy upon their soul. Father, I just pray, Father, for this morning for these souls that are here in this building. Lord, for the souls that may be watching on YouTube or wherever. Lord, I pray, Father God, that, Lord, we would call upon your name. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, we would seek you the right way. Lord, not haphazardly or, or you know, some way that isn't according to your word. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, we would bring the Ark of the Covenant. I pray we'd bring the Jesus into our lives the right way. And Lord, then we could dance before you with all of our might. Then we could sing praise unto you. Then we could sing psalms unto you, Lord God. And Lord, I just pray for the souls of people right now. Lord, I just pray, Father God, that Lord, uh, you would save us. God, I pray for, um, Lord, I pray for the souls of the heathen, Lord God. I pray that you'd save them. Lord, because I was a heathen and you saved me. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for that. But, Lord, I pray for the others. They would be saved, too. And, Lord, I just pray, Father God, that, Lord, you'd guide us and keep us. I pray that uh, uh, we would turn our fears into faith. I pray that we would not be a victim, but we'd put on the victory. Because, Lord, we are mighty men and women of valor. We've been saved. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost, the power of God. And Lord, I pray, Father God, as we go forward into this world, that we would be lights that shines into the darkness. And Lord, the people would see our good works and bring praise to you. And Lord, uh, we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. For thine is the kingdom and power and glory forever. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you until we meet again.